Hey, 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 good morning. Good morning. If you're watching on replay, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. It's a beautiful morning this morning. Birds are singing. Such a beautiful day. Um, while we're waiting for people to sign on, um, I just want to say uh, hello to my little boy, my youngest son, Will. Will Pate's watching this morning. He's watching with his mom. Um, Beverly carried her mother to get a checkup from the procedure she had yesterday. So thank you for your prayers. Um, she had a successful procedure and now they're doing a checkup. So that's where Beverly and my oldest son are at right now watching. So she'll be responding to you guys. Thank you for joining me. Hey, um, don't let the things today that don't matter distract you from what you're supposed to really be doing. And that's what's on my heart. So turn to second or second. Turn to Colossians chapter two. Colossians chapter two. I want to read to you at the word of God. And wait just a moment. Let some others get on here. Good morning, Barbara Cooper. Good morning, Cheryl Williams. Cheryl German too. Good morning. Y'all let me know where you're watching from. Good morning, Sandy Buck. Joe Macy, Pennsylvania. I know where you're from, brother. Good morning, Rick Dallas. If you would, please share this video. Like and share. Uh, every time you um, do anything like that, like or share, it, it stimulates the algorithms and so it gets out in news feed because we have to deal with um, suppression or oppression or uh, censorship, I guess is the word, because anytime you're preaching the truth, the gospel's going out, Satan's at work, he's got people in, in power, places that don't want the truth to go out, don't want people to be encouraged in the Lord today, doesn't want people to know that there's a better way. So we deal with that. But hey, God will get it to who he needs it to go to. So I'm trusting him. Good morning, Sonia. Shelly Dove. Tyree. Good morning, Fran. Good to see you this morning. Good to see all you guys. Hey, let's go to the Word of God. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. and may go further than that. But I want to talk to you about not letting things that don't matter distract you. Because... Um, we have a number and let me say this on our page we have a phone number for our ministry and people have been calling and leaving messages and we're, we're we'll call people back and, and try to help minister to people as we have time to, to talk because we get quite a few messages but if you feel the need to reach out um, our number is on our ministry page and um, if we don't answer we will we'll call you back but the reason I brought that up another reason I brought that up is we have had people we're talking to and helping and I was talking to a gentleman yesterday and I've been where he's at. I know how he feels. Uh, he feels the call of God on his life. He feels that God is doing something in his life, but yet he's distracted by what people are saying and what's going on around him. And I know how that feels. That's an unsettling place. Sometimes we don't see what God is doing in our lives, but God is working through all the, the drama, working through all the stuff that's going on around us to grow us. So you, you don't grow in easy times we grow in the hard times you know a warrior and that's what we really are warriors of christ a warrior is only at peace when he's in conflict does that make any sense because if a warrior has nothing to do if a warrior's not out there fighting a battle or if he's not uh trying to move forward and take more position for the, for the king he's working for and serving if he's not moving or she's not moving forward then they become complacent they become an anxious and depressed and so we need that battle. We need that battle that keeps us motivated. But sometimes we grow weary. And sometimes the people that we're running with, uh, even though they may mean well, sometimes they distract us from what our true purpose is. Don't be distracted. Somebody say, don't be distracted this morning. Don't be distracted. I want to read to you Psalm, excuse me, Colossians 9, Lord, I can't talk. Colossians 2, verses 9 and 10. Let's go to the Word of God. Colossians 2, verses 9 and 10 this morning. For in him, in Jesus, for in him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Somebody say, I'm complete in Jesus. I'm complete in Jesus. You are complete in him. That means you don't need anything else. You don't need anything else but Jesus. That's all we need. We're complete in him. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. But that word dwell, really in the Greek, means permanently settled. It's permanently settled that in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Nothing was created without Jesus Christ. 
He's God. He's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, all in one. He's the fullness. And when you have Jesus, you have everything. You don't need anything else. It says we're complete in him. That word complete actually in the Greek means in him you are full. You are full in him. Full of what? Full of the Spirit of God. Full of love and truth and mercy and grace. The gifts of the Spirit. The Bible says, as the Father hath loved me, Jesus said, so have I loved you. And if you continue in my love, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and I abide in his love. These things have I spoken to you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Now, why don't you have joy today? Why don't you have joy today? Because there are times when I don't feel the joy of the Lord, and sometimes I'm struggling too. The reason is because we're not walking in the fullness of God. We're not walking in what we have. We've inherited through the cross, through Jesus Christ. The fullness of God gives us joy to go on. People will try to put things on you. They'll try to put burdens on you to bear. They'll try to make you be something that you're not. They'll try to make you be what they are. You know why they do that? Because their position means more to them than your purpose. And I'm just being honest with you today. They want their position to be settled. Sometimes their position means more to them than the truth because they're so used to being where they're at and who they are that anything that challenges them, and maybe you challenge them, maybe, maybe the way you're, you, your walk with God is challenging them to come out of the box a little bit. Maybe they think, man, I don't feel comfortable around that person. They're doing something that I wouldn't do or that's different than the way I would do it, and that challenges them because their position means more to them than the truth or more the, to them than their, your purpose. Their position in life may mean more than your purpose. And see, that's a distraction because God has a purpose for each and every one of our lives. Every one of us, God has a purpose for your life. Every day, there's a purpose for this day. There's a reason you're awake today. You were a warrior in Christ before your feet ever hit the ground. While you were asleep and resting, God the Holy Ghost, was in you and with you, speaking to your spirit, dealing with your heart, working things through you. God's not, he doesn't sleep. He doesn't ever quit. He never stops working. And so what you have to face today, God, God already has laid it out. God has prepared a way. He knows exactly what's going to happen. He knows exactly how you're going to react. And sometimes that's one reason, or that may be the reason you're facing struggles that you're facing is because God is seeing all the distractions all these things coming at you, and he's trying to get you to focus more on him and less on the world, less on the distractions. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Now, I'm going to tell you, sometimes people that mean well and try to do good things in your life will be a distraction. And you have to guard against that. I'm not saying be rude or unkind, but you have to guard against distractions. Every battle, every battle that's going on is not necessarily your battle. It may not be the way God is calling you to go. One of the hardest lessons I had to learn as a preacher was I don't belong to a denomination. Now, I don't say that arrogantly. I don't say that for any other reason, just being honest. I wanted to belong to a denomination. I grew up in a denomination. The church I grew up in was very serious about their denomination if, if you can be very but more serious than others they meant they actually had everything laid out exactly what they believed you had to agree to this covenant this is what you believe you believe exactly what they believe and it was a book some men wrote a bunch of men got together and wrote this book because they thought they would write a book and it meant more i guess than well i don't think they thought that but to me it didn't mean nothing because this is all that matters i didn't fit in and then when i became uh more empowered by God, and I started preaching the word, and it seemed like the spirit was really growing in me. I wanted to be a part of uh, another denomination. I thought, well, I'll go where they're at because they believe in the fullness of the spirit. I'm going to go there. Then I found out that even they wanted to put me in a box and say, well, you've got to believe it this way. You've got to believe that you've got what you got because it happened this way, and if it didn't happen that way, then you ain't got what you got. But see, none of that lined up with scripture. What they were telling me didn't line up with scripture. The Bible didn't say you must have it this way. You must get it this way. The only place I could find where the Bible was real specific about how you receive things from God was about through Jesus Christ. And here we are back again. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In him, you are complete. It didn't matter what man was trying to offer me. God had already given me what they said I didn't have. 
They were trying to tell me I didn't have the spirit. Now, me, I, this is not about speaking in tongues, but God, here we go. We're going to go into this. This video is not about speaking in tongues, okay? But this is where we're headed. I went to this church, the Pentecostal church. Good people. I love them to death. But they were telling me I didn't have the Holy Ghost the, as much as I could have because I hadn't spoken in tongues. And that if I speak in tongues, then I'll have it all. As a new convert, full of the Spirit of God, the power of God was already upon me. I want, hey, if there's more, baby, bring it on. I'll take all I can get. I'm not discriminating. I'm not, I don't have prejudice in my mind about eating it. I'll take it. If it's, if it's available, I'll take it. That was my attitude. And I've told this story before, and some of y'all have heard it before, but I'm going to tell it again. I was praising God because they told me if I praised God enough, if I worshiped enough, that he would pour his spirit out on me and I would get baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'll take it. So I'm worshiping God. I'm praising God. 45 minutes to an hour on the altar. Sweat pouring off of me. I just praising God. Closed my eyes. I don't even remember if I was bent over or what. All of a sudden, wind started hitting me. Now, I had studied enough to know that mighty rushing wind that come in the day of Pentecost. It was a mighty rushing wind and cloven tongues of fire sat on them. And I'm like, that's what's going to happen, right? Because that's what happened in the Bible, right? Because if we're going to say that it has to happen exactly how you say it happens, it must happen according to this word. It must be exactly like this word or it's man. Can I get an amen? So as I'm sitting there waiting, I feel that wind hit me, and I'm like, oh, man, it's the mighty rushing wind. And I open my eyes, and they're fanning me with a towel. Now, it's kind of funny now, but back then it, it really hurt because I had put all my confidence, all my trust in what these people were telling me about the things of God. I was distracted from my purpose. See, God had already filled me with the Holy Ghost. I'd done and been baptized in the Holy Ghost on the golf course. It happened. That's what happened long before I hooked up with these people. And so the thing was, why they're, why people, some people are speaking in tongues and running around the church and praising God, not picking on them. I'm out there witnessing to the lost. I'm telling people about Jesus. Now, here's my question for you. What is the evidence that you have the Spirit of God? Is it that you speak in tongues? Is it that you can do all these things? The Bible says he empowered them for service. He empowered them to be a witness unto Jerusalem, Judea, and to all the world. The evidence that you have the Holy Ghost of God is that you're a witness for God because the Holy Spirit is more concerned about a lost soul than whether you speak in a tongue. And so here's the deal. You can get distracted. I'm sharing this with you because this was a distraction in my life. I got to the point where I wanted to be so, so much fit. I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be like people said I was supposed to be that it distracted me from what God was doing in my life. God was calling me to come to the woods and preach on Facebook long before I even knew that was ever going to happen. God was calling me to preach in where I could reach other countries through social media. I didn't know this was going to happen. Still don't understand it, but I can tell you this. God had a purpose for me. He didn't want me associated with a particular denomination because if I had, that would have been control over me. They would have put their control on me, and they'd have put me in a parameter and said, you've got to do it this way. You have to be this way. And it would have took something out of me that God gave me. And I'm going to tell you what that was. When I was under conviction and I was lost, I went to every preacher I could find. I was miserable. I was a wretch. I was, I was terrified. I, I had something happening to me that I didn't understand. I, I felt like I was losing my mind. I couldn't work. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. It was a horrible place to be. It's close to hell as it can be on earth. But no man could help me. No man could offer comfort. No preacher could take the word and show me that it would make me feel better. Nobody could help me, not even my wife, my mom and dad. Nobody could help me but God. But God. That day, January 18, 2003, on the golf course, when I called out to Christ and the power of God hit me, and I fell on the ground praising and worshiping God, knowing I was born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in the Holy Ghost at the same time. That's not going to fit some theology. Don't care because the power of God hit me and I know what I got. The preacher that was with me was running around the grass praising God. Things were going on with him. And all I can tell you is it changed my life. No man gave me that. No denomination gave me that. No church program pointed that out to me. You know who gave me that? The Holy Ghost of God, who Jesus sent back to this earth to empower us for what? To be a witness. In these last days, people need to see Jesus Christ, not me. 
less of me, Lord, and more of you. We've got to die to self. We've got to understand there's a power that works in us, and that power has a purpose and a plan, and we can get distracted and, and completely negate the power of God in our lives because we're trying to serve people. We're trying to serve man. Serve God. The Bible says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Don't be distracted today. Be focused. You woke up this morning. God had already laid your plan. Your, the plan is laid out. It's laid out for you today. You will miss the opportunity to bless someone and to bless God if you're distracted by things that are going on around you. Satan will try to distract you. He will send people to, to distract you. We must be focused and, and have a purpose. Purpose ourselves. Look, I'm looking for God today. I'm going to look for the Lord. I'm going to look for that door he's going to open. That way I can help somebody. I can speak some truth and some life in somebody's life. Maybe somebody's got a word from me. Maybe there's some encouragement coming from me. But I'm so distracted that I'll miss it. I pray that we don't do that today. I pray that we don't get so distracted that we completely miss what God has for us today. Lord, I thank you for this message, this devotion. I pray that it falls on good ground. Lord, I pray that you would have your way in our lives. I pray, Lord, that you would keep us from being distracted and we could seek you and find our, our purpose is to glorify Jesus Christ in every day of our lives. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Please share and like this video. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning.